All joking aside, welcome back to Safety Glasses Required. This is a really cool product. And it's 3D printed. Those of you who are new to my channel or those of you who have been subscribers for a while know that I like to feature uh, how to make cool stuff, how to use your 3D printer to do useful things, um, how to make functional parts, and this is both functional and cool. Uh, it's the Out of Darts Jupiter, made by Luke Goodman. Uh, many of you probably know of him as Out of Darts on YouTube. He's got a really cool channel where he shows Nerf modding, how to make and assemble these guys, and, and do other fun projects with Nerf and 3D printing. I've been a fan of Luke's for a while and finally picked up one of these and decided to do a little video with, to show you guys how it's assembled and then talk about what's really, what makes this really cool to me. So what's cool is that you can take a hobby of yours in this case, for Luke, it was Nerf guns and 3D printing. Combine them together and make a very successful business. Luke is selling a lot of these right now. He's got 20 plus Prusa i3 3D printers running basically nonstop to keep up with production on this. And, and, and what's cool is that he, he could start very small and kind of grow organically. There was no big risk. He didn't have to go out and buy... $70,000 injection mold or multiple molds for this and if he wants to tweak it and adjust it he doesn't have to buy new molds or pay a machine shop to remachine uh, the different uh, tooling to make these these blasters. If he needs to make a revision he can simply update the 3D model and begin printing the revision later that day. That That's awesome. That's that's amazing. And it, go, to think about where we're going like that in the past to make something like this, you had to be a company the size of Hasbro and Nerf and have a team of engineers and have a factory full of injection molding and have a machine shop to make those molds. 
Now a guy with an idea, $700 or less for a good 3D printer. Watch YouTube videos on how to learn how to use that 3D printer. Watch even more YouTube videos and learn how to run Fusion 360. And you can take your idea from your head to something tangible. And if people really like that thing, and you do YouTube videos and people are really impressed with that thing, you can start an Etsy store and start selling it. And if it does well, maybe you add some more printers. If you have a problem and you need to make some revisions or try something different or do a different color, there's not a huge change order that needs to take place. Like I said, you just simply update the model or try putting it in a different material or switch filaments. And then your idea continues to grow. And pretty soon, you've got 20 Prusa i3 3D printers running in your garage making these non-stop. What's next? Who knows? So what ideas do you have? What's stopping you from taking your idea and turning it into something tangible that maybe could benefit the rest of the world? Or maybe it's just something fun that you can shoot some targets with. So by the way, I've been working on my own little project. Part of the reason why I've been gone from the channel for a while is I've been working on something uh, Nerf related myself. So uh, I have two young boys now who recently discovered Nerf themselves. Um, my wife wasn't super happy that they were shooting each other with Nerf guns. They're both pretty little at this point. So I came up with my own targets. So these are toy targets. I'm on Etsy as well now with these. Um, these are, these, these particular parts are all 3D printed here out of ABS. I wanted nice and durable so that when they're hit with a Nerf blaster that they can take a beating. Some of them are actually laser cut. It makes it a little bit easier to get uh, uh, a variety of colors and customize them. And um, I've kind of evolved the idea from just these simple knockdown targets to, to this. This was one of my first um, prototypes of an idea. And this, with the way this works is there's an Arduino, four AA batteries inside of here, and a servo motor. And when it falls down, the servo motor sets it back up after the Arduino detects it's fallen down. So this is pretty cool, but it, it ultimately ended up being relatively expensive to manufacture um, because of all the electronics and the time involved in soldering it. So this is going to become an open source project. Uh, the files for this will be released very soon. I'll do a video where I assemble it similar, maybe stop motion, maybe not, on how to assemble this as well. And then hopefully we can make this something It's another cool project, another way to use your printer in a useful way to make something fun. So taking that design and making it into something that was maybe a little bit more affordable, I decided to remove the stepper motor and some of the other complex electronics. This simply has a noisemaker in it. Oh, nice shooting, Jax. And when you hit the target, it plays a cool sound. In fact, that sound, you can plug your phone in and record any sound off the internet, off of Netflix, anywhere you want. You should probably, you know, be careful of copyright laws. But anyhow, you, you can plug in any sound here that you want, record it. Uh, I think it's like up to 30 seconds. And then when the when it's hit, it, it plays that sound. Um, if it's hit immediately after, it stops playing the sound. That's just the side effect of the noise box that's in here. The files for this will also be available. And the cool thing about this is it has interchangeable targets where you can take and even install these other other designs. This, by the way, was printed with my new Palette 2 Pro. Awesome. I'm enjoying working with that. Uh, there's still some bugs. I'll do some more videos about that. My three-year-old loves Ghostbusters. So here's another one that I've been working on, another palette print. This is a particularly fun one here. Um, I cannot sell these for obvious reasons, but I can make them have fun myself. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't own the, the IP to this, obviously. Um, but this is this is also this is available on Etsy, but the files will also be soon uploaded to uh, I'm not sure yet where I'm gonna upload them. probably my mini factory at this point is where I'm kind of leaning at this point um, But it also has the noisemaker box inside of it, and it's also playing it's the State Marshmallow Man. An appropriate sound for the target so I'm hoping we can take this to some really cool ideas um, combining the palette and the variety of different sound effects that you can find obviously on the internet and this this is just a cool project like I'm, I'm really having fun with these now so I, I have other 
projects as well. Um, if you want to check out Toy Targets, if you're interested in picking some up yourself or printing some yourself, there'll be uh, eventually links down below for the Etsy store. There'll be links down below for the Etsy store. There'll be uh, the files will be uploaded soon. Once I get those uploaded, I want to have some videos to sh uh, make sure everybody understands how to assemble them. There's a few tricks, but nothing too complicated. So I attended the Midwest Rep Rap Festival 2019 in Goshen, Indiana, or Murph, as uh, it's it's commonly called, uh, a couple weeks ago. It was it was actually a really cool experience, and it's amazing to see like where the hobby of 3D printing is going and how you can turn it at hobby into something else and how where I think the future in some ways maybe of 3D printing is that you know there, there'll be use it's obviously very useful for you know prototyping and for uh, making small test runs of parts or even doing small batches of production um, and for this sort of stuff where you're just getting started and you don't have the money to invest in injection molds and obviously there are even like I said there are advantages to not having expensive injection molds that allows you to iterate quickly much like Prusa does with releasing new file or releasing new versions of the Prusa the i3 um, so you can quickly iterate but where I think hobby 3d printing is probably going is when I was a kid like I built model I had model trains I had model cars I had uh, I was into Nerf guns. All those things, all those hobbies can all be benefit from a 3D printer. And so you've got guys that are into RC things, so the open RC F1 car. You've got guys that are into model trains. You've got guys that are into Nerf guns. You've got guys that are into all kinds of hobbies like that. Where I think you're going to start seeing the designs migrate more to open source or more online or where there's kits so that you buy either 3D printed parts or download and print the parts yourself, which is even better because then you can make changes and tweak things and print parts when they break, obviously is really cool. And, and you're going to see, you're going to see the hobby market going towards that, right? Like you've got the Spitfire uh, and those, the, the 3D printed airplane models. I can't remember the name of the company that you put it somewhere here uh, that does with those. And there's another one I recently found that does these really cool Jeeps. Like they look like real, you know, uh, Jeep Wranglers basically like when you see the pictures it's hard to believe the video it's hard to believe it's not a real Wrangler the, the model is that detailed in the RC and you're not that's a labor of love, obviously. Like that's somebody's hobby that really enjoys Jeeps and modeling and 3D printing and stuff. So like those files are they're amazing. Like so, I, like I said, I think that's where we're gonna see at least in the next five years, ten years, something like that. Hopefully sooner. Where it's not going to be in every household, but those guys who are into making, tinkering, building stuff like that, they're obviously already getting or will be getting sooner 3D printer, and you're gonna start seeing more useful things like. I think people are going to get tired of printing benches and groots and all the other silly little trinkets and stuff like that when it can do so much more, right? Like you can make an entire ecosystem of cool projects where you've just got, you know, all of this is 3D printed and everything is, you know, evolving and everybody's adding to it. Like that's the whole, that's it. That's the thing, right? So where's the chance, you know, I'm, I'm hoping to do more videos and I keep saying every video I release, like I'm going to do this faster and get more out. I have to. I like uh, this is this is. I, I have to start showing you guys more of this stuff. So, this is the next set of videos. Will be on some of this stuff. I uh, hope to do some videos on the palette, um, and other useful, cool projects. Um, maybe some more stop motion. You guys like that? Leave some comments down below. Uh, let me know what projects you think are really cool that maybe I should feature. Some other things. There's some other Nerf guns that are obviously 3D printed. The Caliburn's one that comes to mind. Uh, the Project FDL is another one I saw at Murph that is amazing. Like, it's just, yeah, I can't, couldn't imagine a Nerf gun like that when I was a kid. So, thanks again. Please like, subscribe, share. I'm hoping to grow the channel. Hoping to continue to, you know, push out. Hey, let's keep making cool stuff with with Nerf, with uh, 3D printing. Thanks again.